Okay, in this video, I'd like to continue on my tutorials on vector calculus for electromagnetism. This video number two, I'm going to talk about the dot or scalar product. I'd like to draw your attention to my website, universityphysicstutorials.com. So, just ignore there what, what, what I've written just for convenience. And just to point out, if you have a vector, let's say the vector capital A, there are three things you can do to it. You can multiply it by a scalar, and there's only one way you can multiply it by a scalar. Or you can multiply it by a vector. And there are two ways you can multiply it by a vector. You can take the dot or the scalar product, and you, or you can take the cross or vector product. Now, the thing here is that if you multiply a vector by a scalar, you get back a vector. But if you take the, if you take the dot or scalar product, you get back a scalar. And if you take the cross or vector product, you get back a vector. You might say, well, who cares? That's not a big deal. I'm telling you now that if you're studying electromagnetism, it's important to know what quantities are vectors and what quantities are scalars. So it's important to know what, would say, the cross or vector product does, gives you back a vector, or the dot or scalar product, it's important to know it gives back a scalar. So let's define two vectors, A and B, as I have done there in blue. So you have the x component, the y component, and the, the, the z component, each multiplied by their associated unit vectors. Or you can write it in this notation, this bracket notation, which I discussed more in video 3, but not by a lot, and you may or may not realize that this is actually a row vector. So in linear algebra we talk about a row vector, or a, or a, a row matrix. So, the, and then we have b, we give them b sub x, b sub y, and b sub, b sub z in the k, a, i, j, and k. Note, by the way, we can also have x hat, y hat, and z hat, but as our unit vectors. Personally, I prefer i, j, and k. No big deal. So the dot product, a dot b, is written like that, of course. That's why it's called the dot product. And it's defined as a, b cos theta. Or the magnitudes of a, b cos theta. I should put in the magnitude here. So what does this mean? Let's say I have the vector a, and I have the vector b. And here is the angle. Theta is the angle between them. Now think about when cos, think about the value of cos. So cos of naught, that's naught, is equal to 1, and the cos of 1 is equal to naught. So, or we could say the cos of 90 degrees is naught, and the cos of naught is 1. So really what we're doing here, so this, this scalar product is maximized when, th it's maximized when theta is equal to naught, and it's minimized when theta is equal to uh, 90, or 1, we'll say, right? If you're on the unit circle, it would be 1, or if it's 90, if you're 90 if you're talking about degrees. So really what the dot product does is it measures how, um, how much their directions are equal. So if the dot product a, if the, if the dot product a dot b was equal to a b, well then of course they're pointing in the same direction because the co you got the cos of theta which is uh, cos of naught which is equal to 1, so you just get the magnitude of a b. However, if they're perpendicular, well then when you get a dot b, you would get 0. So two vectors which are perpendicular, their dot product is zero. Okay, so can we think of any vectors in written above here which are perpendicular? Of course we can. We can, we can think of, let's say if we draw in our Cartesian or rectangular coordinate system, let's say we have i hat, j hat, and k hat. By definition, i hat is perpendicular to j. That means i hat dot j hat is equal to zero, by definition. Now, j is perpendicular to k by definition. That means that j hat dot k hat is equal to zero. And of course, you can see where this is going, I'm sure, that if you take the dot product, we'll say k hat dot i hat, you also get zero. All right? Perfect. So if you take a dot, the dot product of any of the unit vectors, you must get zero. But what happens if we get the dot product of i hat dot i hat? Well, these are, they're obviously pointing in the same direction, so you must get 1. Or if you get, what if you get j hat dot j hat? Well, then that's of course going to be 1. Or k hat dot k hat. That's going to be equal to 1. And finally, let's say for some obscure reason that you're getting the dot product between i hat and negative i hat. 
Well, of course, that's going to be equal to minus 1. They're pointing in the same direction, isn't they're parallel, but they're actually they're anti parallel. So, knowing this, how do we generalize the formula, this formula, for general vectors, which are represented by in their Cartesian or rectangular coordinates? Well, what we do, let's say if we multiplied, well, I'm just going to write the answer first, actually, right? So, a dot b is equal to a sub x. Um, sorry, I'm going to write it in the way I've written up here. So a sub x, b sub x, i hat, plus a sub y, b sub y, j hat, plus a sub z, b sub z, k hat. So these two, these two forms of the dot or scalar product are equivalent. Actually, they're not, because I need to remove these inner vectors. Now they're equivalent. Of course, they're scalars. But you wonder, well, where did this come from? Well, it comes from the following. If I multiply a and b, let's just ignore this, this cost for the moment, right? So I want to get, so what's going to happen is this, right? Let's say if I multiplied a and b together, I'm going to get, say, let's say I multiply this by here, here, and here. So I'm going to get a sub x i hat, b sub x i hat. I'm going to get a sub x i hat and b sub y j hat plus a sub x i hat and b sub z k hat. Now we just saw a minute ago that if you multiply i and j, well, you, you, i and j get zero, and if you multiply i and k you get zero. So what you only need, and if you multiply i and i get one. So let's just get rid of them because you got one. So if you multiply a sub x i hat by each of these three components, your result is a x b x with no direction. So that's where that term came from. Similarly, you can imagine multiplying a sub y j hat by b sub x i hat, b sub y j hat, and b sub z k hat. This time, I'm going to do this one, okay? So you're going to get a sub y um, j hat, uh, b sub x i hat, plus a sub y j hat, b sub y j hat, plus a sub y j hat, uh, b sub y k hat. Okay, so j, j dot k is 0, i dot j is 0, j dot j is 1, you're left with a sub y, b sub y, which is exactly what we have here. And of course, we have the same thing if you multiply the z component by the three components of b. Alright, so that's how we get the dot product. So I'm just going to close this off here. Just Okay, and rewrite that so we can have it. Now, so that is how you do the dot or scalar product, and it gives you back a scalar. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also visit universityphysicstutorials.com.